of the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, I bring greetings to the Liberty Church London. It's an honor to share the word of God with us again, even at this conference. Last year we were together and we did not know that uh, things would turn out like this, but we thank God. The Bible says to give thanks in all things. And so we thank God for the privilege of the, the technology, the ability to still bring the word of God even through this platform. And I'm truly honored. I appreciate Dr. Shola and his dear wife for granting this platform. It's an honor. And I pray that the word of God that is coming would bless our hearts in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the privilege of fellowship. Thank you for the Liberty Church London. Thank you for the Shift Conference, the wonderful things that you are doing already in the lives of your people. I pray that this morning your word will come with power. I pray that this morning your word will come with fire. In the name of Jesus, grant understanding. We receive the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles. We thank you because our lives will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Uh, I have a number of things to share. By the grace of God, we have two sessions. I'll be teaching and just speaking over your life. And the next session will be a miracle session where the Lord will grant us the grace to minister. So to do well to let everyone around you know that God is doing great things even in this conference. I felt stirred in my spirit to share a few principles that have to do with advancement. This is a conference that seeks to push us forward to be able to make progress first in our work with God and then to excel in our kingdom assignments. And I trust that as this word comes, it will bless our hearts. Conferences like this are designed to create the platform for increase, for growth, for impact, to see us move from one level to the other, not just in our spiritual lives, but our finances, our families, our career, etc. So we'll start by considering two very interesting scriptures. First is Deuteronomy chapter 2. Please turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. Very thought-provoking scripture. It says, ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Then it leaves us with an instruction, turn you not words. You have encompassed this level, this realm, this dimension, spiritually, financially, career-wise, family-wise. You have encompassed, you have dwelt around this level for long it says, turn you not words, rise higher, move to a higher pedestal, a higher dimension of kingdom exploits. Very powerful scripture, Deuteronomy 2 and verse 3. The second scripture is 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 12. I have my Bible here and I'll turn very quickly. 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6, very interesting scripture. I'm reading from the King James translation, 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6. Here's what it says. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Listen carefully. Samuel the prophet is speaking to the people. And he's saying, it is the Lord that advanced Moses. It is the Lord that advanced Aaron. 
That means it is not within the power of men to advance themselves. They can do the best that they know to do intellectually by their connections, but it is the Lord. It takes the Lord himself to cause men to move forward. It is the Lord that advanced Moses, advanced Aaron, and brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. It is God's desire that we move forward in life. It is God's desire that we make progress in life. Um, growth and increase is a desire of all men, regardless the kind of people, regardless the geography, regardless the culture, regardless the civilization. There is no man who remains satisfied with delay, with retrogression, with a sense of limitation. We desire growth and advancement. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, it says the path of the just, Proverbs 4 and verse 18, the path of the just is as a shining light, the Bible says, that it shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. We've seen from three scriptures now that God intends and he desires for us to move forward. Prophesy to yourself and say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to move forward. I obtain grace to leave this current level spiritually, financially, career-wise. I decree and declare that my destiny is shifting by the spirit to a higher dimension of grace. I think it was Sinach, the gospel artist from Nigeria here that sang a very prophetic song. She said, walking in abundance, it says moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. Very powerful song, walking in abundance and then moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. But then there are a few principles that I want to share with us that are responsible for advancement. You see, believers desire to rise, we desire to excel in our lives, but the kingdom is systemic. We have to understand that intention and good desire is not enough. We must be equipped with the requisite level of spiritual information, the strategy, the methodologies of the kingdom that are responsible for growth and excelling. Otherwise, this would just remain a dream. It would remain a desire that may never manifest. The kingdom of God is systemic in its operation. That means that connecting every spiritual outcome, there are principles. Say principles. There are principles, the Bible calls them mysteries. So there are mysteries that connect to spiritual growth. There are mysteries that connect to wealth and abundance. There are mysteries that connect to longevity. There are mysteries that connect to influence. And our assignment is to, by the ministry of the fivefold, as the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 4, that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the maturing of the saints. So that through platforms like this, we are able to bring the body of Christ, the body of believers into a higher level of spiritual enlightenment to not only know the possibilities that are there in this kingdom, but to connect them with the keys and the mysteries that drive them to those possibilities. I'll share a few within the time that we have and I want you to please pay attention. In fact, I'd like you to pray in one minute. Just speak over yourself and declare that your eyes are open. Your eyes are open to see. Your ears are open to hear. In the name of Jesus. The first that I'll be talking about this morning very quickly, the first kingdom key that controls advancement that is able to shift men from one dimension to the other is the power of vision the power of vision write it down please the power of vision what is vision a very clear picture of your next level a very clear picture a detailed picture of the next dimension of God's dealings in your life as revealed by the word as revealed to you by the spirit 
Many people want to move forward in life, but they do not have a vision. Visions are powerful. They, they, they help to construct your focus. They give you a clear picture of where you are going to. You cannot excel in, in your spiritual life if you do not have an idea of where you are going. You cannot excel in business if you do not have an idea of where your company is going. The Bible says, when you read Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 11 and 12, uh, for time's sake, we may not turn there. It says, what seest thou? And Jeremiah said, I see an almond tree, the shoot of an almond tree. And he says, you have seen correctly. And as a result of the clarity of your sight and the correctness of your sight, he says, I will hasten my word to perform it. So the hastening of the word is not just dependent on the ability of God. It's also dependent on the clarity, your ability to catch that vision. You will make progress and accelerate in your life, not just because God is with you alone, but that you are able to have a clear picture. I know where I am going. I know where I should be by November. I know where I should be by 2021. Sadly, our society is full of very sincere but visionless people who wallow around in all kinds of religious hopes. One day things will change, they will say. They will wait for circumstances and situations to predict the next outcome of their life. Uh, a, a wise man once said the greatest way to predict your future is to create it. You create it through knowledge. A very clear picture. Your vision must be broken into achievable goals. Write this down. Visions are powerful, but leaving it as a vision, I want to have a global ministry. I want to have a global business. I want to impact nations. I want to build a platform that is able to bless women and children, say. I want to build a brand. That's a wonderful vision. But that vision, as, as important as it is, it must be broken into goals. Goals. Achievable goals. Then further broken, those goals must be broken into daily tasks. You see, let me tell you something. One year is simply 365 days. One year is one day plus one day plus one day plus one week plus another week plus one month plus another month. So the unit of that long time span is your daily tasks if you are not effective in your daily tasks they will not accumulate to drive you into that desired end we wake up in the morning without any clear plan for the day and we do not know that every day wasted is a portion of a destiny wasted let me say it again Every day wasted is a portion of your destiny wasted because the unit of destiny is time. And for every one hour, one day that you waste, it is going to have a compounding effect on your destiny. It took vision to put this program, for instance, to place. In spite of the pandemic, in spite of the limitations that you know, direct fellowship would bring. It took a man of vision like your pastor to now create a very clear strategy to say the, the, the meeting, the conference would still happen. And that vision now was broken to goals. Getting all the speakers together, coordinating the logistics that will make this happen. You see, it, it, it's not just the intention of God and his desire to bless people alone. It, that, that vision had to come upon the life of an individual who is also a visionary. I pray it is my desire that God himself will cause us in this season to be men and women of vision. Not just to live our lives by happenstance, live our lives hoping that whatever would be, would be. So vision, vision is very, very important. If you do not have vision... You will not be able to achieve much in your life. The Bible says that without vision, 
the people perish. A version says the people cast off restraint. That means there is no focus. You do not have coordinates of discipline in your life. When you lack vision, you lack focus. When you lack vision, you lack the moral stance to say no to certain things. You see, if you are not, vision gives you the justification to prune activities in your life. If you are not visionary, you will not have an excuse to remain focused because anything that wants to buy into your time and your life will have legitimate grounds to. But if you have a vision, the vision will give you a justification to say no to relationships, to say no to good things that may not be consistent with your destiny. Vision does not only prune evil, it prunes many good things that are not part of the requirements for your destiny. There are so many good things around our world today. The Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Praise the Lord. So let's go very quickly to the second, the second biblical principle that is responsible for advancement that shifts people to the next level of their life. The power of faith. The power of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. Very, very powerful. Faith. Why do we need faith? We need faith because we are dealing with realities that are largely unseen. We are dealing with realities that at the time we desire them, they are not yet manifest. And then this kingdom operates by faith. The Bible tells us very clearly that through faith, we understand, Hebrews 11 and verse 3, that the walls were framed by the word of God. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Repeat it after me, please. The just shall live by faith. That means if you do not understand the dynamics of faith, you will not be able to live effectively. No matter how well-meaning you are, you will need to understand faith. Very, very important. Numbers chapter 23, please, and verse 19. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. Let me turn very quickly there. The Bible gives us a very instructive revelation about God. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. Here's what it says. God is not a man. Wow. Powerful. It is true that God is not a man. Listen, listen, listen. I know some of you already say, no, 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 no. But the Bible talks about God being a man. God is not a man. God only became a man. God is not a man. He became a man. As a demonstration of his love, a demonstration of his passion to redeem man. But God is not a man that he should lie. A lie means a quality of vacillation, a quality of inaccuracy in truth. And the Bible says that God does not have that propensity he cannot lie. He is ever true. In fact, Revelation calls him faithful and true. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Hallelujah. This is so powerful. The Bible is giving you a very powerful information about God. That God is not a man. So he does not lie. That if he says it, he's able to do it. If he speaks it, he's able to make it good. We live in a world where people may be sincere, but they may not have the ability to make that which they intend to come to pass concerning their lives and your own life. And the Bible says God is not like that. If he speaks a thing, he has the power to bring it to pass. In fact, Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, turn there very quickly and then I'll talk a bit on faith. Hebrews chapter 6, 
from verse 15. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. I trust that you're getting blessed. 6 and verse 15. It says, And so, talking about Abraham now, it says, After he had patiently endured, the man of faith now, in fact, let me start from verse 13. For when God made a promise to Abraham, listen carefully, because he could not swear by any greater, he swore by himself, saying, saying, God is not committed to what he has not said. Saying, surely, blessing, in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply thee. And so, verse 15, after he had patiently endured, he finally obtained the promise. What is faith? Let me define faith for you because I think that that's where a lot of people have um, our definition of faith is why so many people do not walk in Bible faith. Faith is more than believing. Faith is more than just a mental assent. Faith is more than agreeing that a thing can be possible. Faith, I define faith as the name given to the action you take. Please pay attention. The name given to the action you take. Actions of obedience now. Based on your revelation of who God is and the integrity of his word. One more time. Faith is the name given to the action that you take based on the revelation of who God is and then the integrity of his person. This is very powerful. So faith is predicated on revelation, action. If you believe or you claim you believe, and eventually there is no action of obedience. You are not manifesting faith. Please listen. Let me your attention now as I share with you what I believe is a true picture of Bible faith. I've taken out time to study this myself from scripture. And I've taken out time to learn at the feet of people who are veterans of faith with proof in their lives. And I can tell you I know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Now, faith, listen carefully. The foundation of true Bible faith is revelation. You cannot have faith without revelation. And you cannot act on nothing. You are acting on the word. You are acting on an instruction. And so it starts with revelation. But not every revelation imparts faith. Listen, there are two dimensions of God that are responsible for imparting faith. Number one, his ability. The consciousness of the ability of God imparts faith in the believer that God is able. God is able. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. It says, Now unto him who is able. It is important that you meditate on the ability of God. How big is this God? How powerful is this God? How mighty is this God? Because your revelation of his might and his ability will determine how far you can believe him. When we doubt God, our doubt is simply our confidence in the fact that we think God is limited. Something about our not believing he is almighty. I always give a very humorous example for those watching our London family and then generally our global family. If, um, if I told you I were going to give you, I would give you 10,000 pounds or 10,000 euros. The first thing you would have to do is not to take my word for it. You have to examine me. Does he have that capacity to produce 10,000 pounds or 10,000 euros? 
So you may need to search around. You may need to ask for those who know me. You may need to find out who I promised some money. Did I fulfill it? You see, so the Bible, this Bible is a manifesto of God's credibility. Attesting to the fact that he is able. He is able. The songwriter says he is able. I'd like you to prophesy, speak over your life that God is able. He is able to lift me. He is able to bless me. He is able to multiply my influence. Listen, if you do not believe in the ability of God, you will never walk in power. You will never watch yourself move forward because the situations and circumstances that stand before us can be intimidating. Goliath always looks intimidating. So it takes faith. I believe God. There is nothing he tells me that I do not believe. There is nothing I find out from scripture that I do not believe. God is able. God is able. Turn it into a prayer in one minute. God, you are able. I kill the voice of doubt and fear and limitation and intimidation. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit that God is able. God is able to lift. God is able to clear the bills. God is able to heal. God is able to lift. God is able to open doors. Yes, he is. If he's unable to do this, then he is not God. You see, when Moses met him, when Moses met the God of the Bible in the wilderness, he was about to send Moses to go to this wizard called Pharaoh. Moses said, no, I, I, I know the kind of training that man went through. I'm not just going to stand with a staff and tell him some deity appeared in the bush and say, and, 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 and mandated that he would come and advocate an exodus. And he said, if I go before Pharaoh, who should I tell Pharaoh had sent me? This is a question you must answer. Life will ask you who sent you. Who gave you the audacity to believe that even through the pandemic you will rise? Who gave you the audacity to believe that even though it looks like everyone is not there to help you, you can still rise? Who gave you the audacity? There is an audacity that the revelation of God's ability imparts upon the believer. This is true Bible faith. And God told him, go and tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. The ability of God. Very quickly, the next dimension or the next quality of God that is responsible for imparting faith is not just his ability alone. You see, um, there are people who have, listen to me, there are people who have the ability, but they may not have the willingness you can have ability and not be willing. You can be willing and not have the ability. Are we together now? The willingness of a man is connected to his integrity. Integrity comes from the word integer, sameness, unbendableness. The Bible says that when God speaks, you can trust him. So this is another quality of God, his integrity 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 that means if god vows that i will lift you he meant it if god vows that this year you will experience the power the grace the glory of god then you can believe him listen we live in a world that is full of falsehood someone can promise you heaven and earth today and change his mind tomorrow someone can promise you a job now someone can promise you some money and all of a sudden change his mind and so we take that idea in dealing with God, that, that, that vacillation of men. So the Bible clarifies it once and for all and says in your dealing with God, remember that God is not a man. He does not lie. He is not like the son of man that can retrace his words back. If he speaks, he has the ability and also the integrity to bring that word to pass. Now, when you have a combination of ability and integrity, you are worth believing. Mm. If you have ability and you do not have integrity, 
there is room to doubt you. If you have integrity and don't have ability, because it is ability that defends integrity. You see, I can have the integrity, but do I have the ability to defend my integrity? This is faith. We are examining the subject of faith. If I stop here, that's fine for this session because it's important that we understand how Bible faith works. You want to move forward? It will be based on your revelation of God's integrity. It will be based on your revelation of God's ability. These are the spiritual qualities that will form your confidence. So that in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the challenges, you can stand and say, I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him, the Bible says, against that day. Now, watch this. Having explained God's ability and God's integrity, let me bring an angle to the subject of faith that probably most believers have not paid attention to. Every promise in the Bible, listen carefully, every promise in the Bible is conditional. Every result in the Bible is conditional. Now listen carefully. The love of God is unconditional, but results in the kingdom are highly conditional. One more time. The love of God is unconditional, but results, our excelling in the kingdom, is based on conditions. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. The Bible says, It shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, it says, to do and observe all that I command you this day. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. It says that the Lord God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2 says, all these blessings, all, not some, all, these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord. Not if you are loved by God. If you will hearken, if you will walk in keeping, most believers focus on finding promises, but we do not focus on finding the conditions attached for the manifestation of that promise. Listen very carefully. This is deliverance for someone already. So we have found out from scripture that God lifts. We have found out from scripture that there is speed. We have found out from scripture that God can prosper. We have found out from scripture that God can turn the heart of a king to favor a man. We have found out from scripture that men can contend for the anointing. We have found out from scripture that God can multiply the influence of a man and, and spread his word and his work in your life all across the globe. But we usually do not focus on finding out the conditions attached. This is what separates believers who experience results and believers who may not experience results. It is not the love of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. It is our inability to understand the requirements. For instance, I desire increase, you may say. Just believing that God is a God of increase will not bring increase. No. You must study the principles that are attached to that dimension of spiritual possibility. So you begin to study principles like there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Give, the Bible says, and it shall be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, Running over shall men give unto you. You begin to study principles like the diligent hand shall be made fat. You see. So if you learn about the spiritual laws that govern wealth and abundance, you learn about the laws of diligence, the laws of productivity, the laws of exchange. All of these are spiritual laws that synergize themselves together to see to it that wealth and abundance becomes yours in experience. Just quoting it and speaking it and hoping it will happen is not faith. I am sorry, but that is not faith. Bible faith is not just saying what God has said. 
Bible faith is not just wishing a manifestation of what God has said. Bible faith is going back to search for the conditions allocated for that manifestation. You only commit God's integrity when your obedience is complete. Not when your desire is there. When your obedience is complete. I pray we are getting blessed. So this is very important. You want to experience longevity. It's, it's not enough to just say I won't die. You will be surprised to see what happens to you. You have to go to the word and find out. Longevity is a possibility in Christ. That means it's obtainable. By the way, let me tell you this. Everything that cannot be captured in Christ cannot be accessed by the saints. The way we function in the kingdom is that every spiritual blessing is routed to the saints through the office of the Christ. The Bible says we have been given all spiritual blessings. The name, the name, the storehouse for those spiritual blessings is what the Bible calls grace. The grace of God represents a system of possibilities, a compendium of every possibility that is in God available to the saints, but only routed through the office of the Christ. Right? So, this is very, very important. I, I need to drum this so that you will understand it. We've spoken about vision, but we have to speak about faith. Because someone might be sitting watching in church now or just watching from your homes or wherever you're watching from and you're saying, Apostle, I, I've, I trusted God to move forward in 2018, 2019, 2020, now 2021, this is March. I assure you it will become as it has always been, except if you find out the principles allocated for that dimension of results. And this is why God has sent me by way of um, technology to bring you a, an understanding of how Bible faith works. So longevity, for instance, you go to scripture and you find out that longevity is a possibility in Christ. Now you keep that knowledge on one side and begin to search for the principles that make that happen. Principle number one says, I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. Here's my advice. Choose life. So you choose life not just by verbalizing life alone. You choose life by making the decisions that are pro-life. For instance, the determination to keep a healthy body is choosing life. The determination to see to it that you do not expose your body to substances that destroy your body. It's a responsibility. It's part of the activity that leads to your choosing life. Another principle that governs longevity. The Bible says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. So, if you are not useful, if your life, your resources, your intellect, your energy is not participating in kingdom come, then you are already a victim, a potential victim of premature death. Your life, there must be space for the kingdom through your life to guarantee longevity. Principle number three, for instance, I'm just using longevity as an example to explain faith. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother that you may live long and that it may be well with you. Because you don't want to live long in a miserable life or with a miserable life. You want to live long and also that it be well with you. Honor is a key that controls longevity. When you dishonor men, you dishonor their sacrifices. Among the many ills that you bring upon yourself is that you cut short the lifespan of every good thing in your life. It is not only your physical, your biological life that will be cut short. Dishonor cuts short the lifespan of every good thing. Your resources, your access, your influence, anything that is good in your life that is alive. Dishonor is able to cut it. So honor extends life. It extends the lifetime and the lifespan of your wealth, your influence, your biological life. Let me give you an assignment. Everyone following, listening, watching, 
This is what I want you to do. Write down three or four areas of your life where you are trusting God to get supernatural results. Areas where you want to shift into new dimensions, virgin dimensions, higher horizons. It could honestly be in an area of your finances. Maybe you are not satisfied with your spiritual level, your prayer level, your word level. Maybe you are tired of struggling, living from hand to mouth, or you are tired of whatever level it is. It may be for your home, it may be for your career. Write it down. Then I challenge you to walk with the spirit of grace, to search through scripture, search for the conditions that secure the power and the integrity of God to perform and to be made manifest over those issues. You are not manifesting faith if you do not know the conditions that are attached to the blessings you desire. I will say this as many times as I have the chance to. You are not walking in Bible faith if all you have is an awareness of the results, the outcome, the end product, the possibilities. You must know the conditions that connect to them. When you know those conditions, the next step is to obtain grace. Listen carefully. The next step, because some of those conditions in many regards cannot be satisfied by human strength. In fact, most of the conditions that lead to the promises we desire, by human strength, we will not be able to satisfy that condition. This is why we obtain grace. The Bible says that God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that ye having all sufficiency that you will abound unto every good work. You are going to have to pray and obtain grace. Father, if giving is connected to finance, to increase, then I obtain the giving grace like the Macedonian church. If consistency of prayer is responsible for my spiritual growth, in spite of my busy schedules, I'm a banker, I'm a pastor, I'm a mother, I'm a father, I'm a leader, I'm, I'm, I'm a businessman, I don't have that time yet, I desire to grow. I obtain the grace so that every time I need to pray, that inertia, that laziness will be conquered on the strength of that grace. Most of the conditions that we are to meet for the results we desire, let me assure you, they will not come to us. We will not be able to fulfill them in the strength of the flesh. We need the supernatural empowerment of the spirit. And in the name of Jesus, for someone listening to me, someone watching, I stretch my hands and I declare, I release that grace, the grace that grants you the stamina, the strength, the discipline, the energizing to walk in keeping with the conditions connected to the possibilities that you desire. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace for your spiritual life. Receive that grace for your finances. Receive that grace for your career. Receive that grace for your business. Receive that grace for ministry. Receive that grace for family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Faith. Faith. Now, this is very, very, very powerful. When you receive that grace, listen carefully. The next thing is obey. Be prompt and be thorough. Be prompt and be thorough. Now you're not in ignorance as to the result you desire to obtain. You're also not in ignorance as to the conditions that connect it. You have obtained grace from God. The next thing is actions of obedience. Actions of obedience. Our knowledge is worthless if we do not translate it into action. Actions of obedience. The Bible says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. It's not enough to know. You must do. You must do. You must do. The doing grace. The grace for obedience. The grace to push through. So I know that prayer 
is part of the factors that control spiritual power. Knowing is not enough. I have obtained grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication. Now I must sustain the stamina to pray without ceasing. I must sustain the stamina to press, to hold on to the four horns of the altar. I know that the study of the word is responsible for my spiritual enlightenment. I obtain the grace for revelation and then I sit down and I study. This is very powerful. Very, very powerful. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. All that we do in this kingdom, the exploits that happen in ministry, the exploits that happen in business, the exploits that happen in finances, they are all faith dependent. And there is no advancement for anyone, any man, any woman, any boy, any girl, any pastor, any prophet, any apostle who ignores a thorough understanding of Bible faith. I made up my mind that I will live by faith. I will walk by faith. Not just by confessing the word alone. Confession is very powerful. But if that's all you do, you are missing out on the equation of faith. Confession is not all that you do. You obtain grace through knowledge to walk in keeping with the conditions that actualize or commit God's hand over that outcome you desire. This is very powerful. Years ago, the Lord told me that he would use me mightily and he would use me across the globe and I would bring his life and his power to nations to kingdoms, to continents, from a very little place, the northern part of Nigeria. He spoke to me and I dared to believe him. But you see, I would have written it down and said, God said this and I would have remained there till today. But I believed. And then the next assignment was to find out what are the conditions I must satisfy for this prophecy to be made manifest in my life. I knew it would require diligence. I knew it would require study. I knew it would require paying the price to sow into the spirit. I obtained grace from God and I've never stopped pressing, paying that price by the spirit. And glory to God what he has done today and what he continues to do. Let me encourage someone. Waiting for God to come through arbitrarily is a spiritual consolation, but it is not how God works. Most of the things that we say in church, they are wonderful cliches, but we need to go back and probe where we got those things from. Because some of them may be very well-meaning expressions of comfort, expressions of sociological consolations, but they do not carry any power in the realm of the spirit to change our lives. I'm speaking to someone who is at the end of a level I'm speaking to someone who is having a holy anger and saying, I'm tired of this level. Remember our first scripture, you have encompassed this level. You may be a man of God listening to me. Thank God for the dimension of power you have seen, but is that all you can see in Christ? Is that all there is? Thank God for the level of revelation God has given you, but is that all there is? Thank God for the level of influence, dear businessman, but is this all? Is this all God can produce through you? Thank God for the level of speed that you have seen, but is this all? Our call among many other things is to maximize our destinies in Christ. For the Bible says the path of the just is akin to a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. So, wallowing in mediocrity is not God's desire. In fact, here's how he puts it. John 15 and verse 8. He says, Herein is our Father glorified, that he bear much fruit. Not just fruit. Much fruit. He says, Let your light so shine before men. Jesus was teaching. Mentoring the disciples in what we call the Beatitudes. He said, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, good deeds, and glorify your Father. I want the Lord to be glorified in my life. I want him to be glorified in and through me. 
And so I want to be able to maximize all that he's put within me to bring it all out and to become a blessing to the nations with the spiritual resources that he's granted me access to. And this is my challenge to you, their viewer and the, the, the entire membership of the Liberty Church and then by extension to Europe and the entire globe. Listen to me, God is counting on us even in this season. Remember the prophecy Isaiah chapter 60, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. I like to quote it from Amplified. Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. The Bible says, Rise to a new light. Why? For your light is come. And he said, The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Nations are confused. People are looking on to God right now. It looks like the future is bleak. People have lost money. People have lost families. Some of you are behind on bills. You're trusting God for breakthroughs. People are plunging into depression. It looks like the, the world, the world is, um, is not worth living in right now. People are committing suicide, contemplating suicide. I bring you a word of hope here at the Shift Conference 2021. Listen carefully. There is hope for a tree. And faith is the victory. It says this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Not just our desire. This is the victory. Say after me, this is the victory that overcometh the world. This is the victory that shifts me from one dimension to the other. This is the victory that brings me into triumph and keeps me in triumph, even our faith. What is our faith? Our confident assurance alongside the steps that we take based on the revelation of God's integrity, based on the revelation of God's ability, based on my understanding of the role that I have to play, and then the grace to play that role diligently. There is nobody who understands this equation and will not see the mighty hand of God. I want us to pray. We'll have to stop here. I just took two points. Please make sure you do not miss the miracle service. Monday, tomorrow will be the miracle service. That will be my final session. I'll have the opportunity to pray for the sick, to prophesy over people, to release the grace and the glory of God right from here across the airwaves and I assure you no matter what the issue is, no matter what the challenge is, I'd like you to release your faith and be expectant. But for now we're going to pray. I believe in the power of prayer. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. It says but in everything. By prayer and supplication garnished with thanksgiving. It says make your request known. Do not assume God knows it. Make your request known. Make your pain known. Make your desire known. Make your expectations known. We're about to pray. I'd like you to bow your heads or stand or lie down or kneel, whatever position that is comfortable for you because we really are going to pray. We'll take the last seven or so minutes that we have now to just pray and talk to our God. The Bible says, that we can come to him boldly to obtain grace, obtain mercy, grace to help even in times of need. I assure you these are times of need and we need to approach him with that understanding. This is the confidence the Bible says that we have in him that when we pray, he hears us. The Bible says, unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lift your voice everywhere and begin to thank the Lord for this word. The principles that make for advancement. Lord, I thank you because I have heard your word and I know that it is your desire to advance me. Listen to me, listen to me. Do not let anyone make you believe that God is comfortable with your stagnation. Do not let anyone make you believe that where you are is the highest of God's expectations for you. No, culture may say stay there. Religion may say stay there. Men may say stay there, but I challenge you to shift. It's time to move to a higher dimension. 
He told the people, Moses, tell the people to go forward. Go forward. Do not let the Red Sea stop you. Go forward. Lift your voice and pray. Father, thank you for your word. The Bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and even understanding to the simple. I have come with a word that is simple enough for you to understand. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Don't be silent. This is the time to pray. London, pray. Europe, pray. Nigeria, pray. Everywhere connected, pray. Make sure you are praying. It is your will. You have to believe that it is God's will. If you do not believe it is God's will to advance you, then you are not sure of his backing. He only backs what is consistent with his will. His kingdom only comes when his will is done. I know it is your will for me to move forward. I know it is your will for me to not remain at the same spiritual level. To not remain at the same prayer level. At the same word level. At the same financial level. At the same level of influence. You desire to shift me and Lord I am ready. Lift your voice and pray. Now I like you to decree and declare. Father, I obtain grace to be a man or a woman of vision. Lift your voice and pray. Careless living comes to an end. Superstitious living comes to an end. Living without a sense of purpose, living without a sense of discipline and focus in the name of Jesus, it comes to an end. I obtain grace to set goals. I obtain grace to set kingdom goals for my life, for my church, for my ministry, for my destiny, for my family. I refuse to just come into the day, come into the morning, end in the night, come into another morning, end in the night without goals, without plans for my life. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus based on the word of God and based on my expectation I set goals I write the vision I make it plain so that I can run I write the vision I write the vision and I make it plain Habakkuk said I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower and I will see what you will say to me I like you to decree and declare father vision vision i'm tired of visionless living i'm tired of living without constraints i'm tired of having anything just going for it like that lord i make up my mind i decree and declare that vision gives me discipline it will guide me it will help me to know who to talk to where to go to and where not to go to the discipline that comes with visionary living i obtain grace for it Vision for my finances, vision for my spiritual growth, vision for my health, vision for my family, vision for ministry, vision for career, vision for business. And then let's pray concerning faith. Oh, how we need it, how we need it. An understanding of faith. Lift your voice and pray. Father, I believe that you are a God of integrity. I believe you are a God of ability. I believe you are a God of integrity. I believe you are a God of ability. Thank you for your integrity. You do not lie. You are God all by yourself. Thank you for your ability. You are not limited. Therefore, I trust you. Lift your voice. Pray. I trust you. I trust you over my finances. I trust you over my ministry, over my spiritual life. I may not see how things will change, but I know they will change at the instance of faith. Now, I'd like you to lift your voice and pray. Lord, reveal to me the principles that connect to my desires. The principles that connect to the possibilities I desire produced in my life, in my family, even in this season. I pray for the spirit of revelation. Connect me to the truths, O oh God. Connect me to the truths that are responsible for the possibilities I desire. That I will not shadow box and just be hoping for nothing. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that I will find these truths. And then obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with those truths. Lord, I obtain grace 
to walk in keeping with the truths that lead to wealth and abundance. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with the truths that lead to high level spirituality. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with the truths that are responsible for influence. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with the truths that are responsible for spiritual power and authority. I obtain grace to walk in truth with the uh, in keeping with the truths that are responsible for favor for access for influence for lifting for longevity for peace in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ now I'd like you to release your faith with me you can stretch your hands to the screen as I pray for you father I pray for the liberty church I pray for Dr. Shola, his wife, the entire congregation. Thank you for this honor you have given to bring your word, the word that will shift us to the next dimension. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that these truths you have heard will not stand against you. In the name of Jesus, I release grace, grace upon you, grace upon grace, grace to live visionary lives, grace to walk by faith, grace to understand the dynamics of Bible faith. In the name of Jesus, I come against every orchestration of darkness. I decree and declare that every manipulation from hell and every onslaught of darkness channeled towards your peace and your liberty. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. My Bible declares blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. The Bible says he nailed it to his cross. Therefore, I declare liberty for you. Even as the name of your church is, I speak liberty. Liberty in finances, liberty in your spiritual life, liberty in your family, liberty in career. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I bless you by the power of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, there is no going down. I prophesy to you, you are moving to higher dimensions, higher levels of grace. In the name of Jesus, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, experience supernatural grace, supernatural grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly before I go off air, please listen carefully. Invite everyone you can find to connect on Monday. All of the platforms that we're going to be airing from will be made available. Please, it's going to be a miracle service. I'm going to be praying for you. And then let me give you an instruction if your pastor will allow. Please write a request of things you're trusting God for. The things that you're trusting God for that must be out of your life. And the things that you're trusting God to bring into your destiny. I'm going to be praying for you and prophetically declaring over those requests and shifting you by prophecy to a new dimension. I still have other principles I'm going to be sharing with you, so make sure you connect early. I believe that the details will be uh, on your screen to just know what and what to do and how to connect. Please be sure that you connect. Invite as many. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. Dr. Shola, thank you one more time. I love you with all my heart. Liberty church thank you so much for this honor the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and look at her. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.